The World Series of Poker is regarded as the most esteemed tournament in the poker world. With a history spanning over 50 years, this event has witnessed numerous unforgettable moments. In this video, we explore 18 remarkable moments from the history of the WSOP. Number 1. In 1970, poker player and casino owner Benny Binion of Las Vegas created an invitational-only poker tournament called the World Series of Poker. Doyle Brunson was there, along with Jack Strauss, Amarillo Slim, Titanic Thompson, and Puggy Pearson. But there was no tournament, just several days of mixed cash games after which they were all invited to choose the best all-round player. Legend has it that each man voted for himself, so Benny then asked them to vote for whoever they thought was second only to themselves. Johnny Moss was crowned the champion in that way. The WSOP adopted the structure we would know today in 1971, a freeze-out event when a Los Angeles Times writer advised Jack Binion that he needed more of a competition if he wanted press attention. The $5,000 buy-in was paid by seven participants. Though the individual hands have not been documented, it is known that after two days, Johnny Moss won fair and square. Doll Brunson subsequently commented, it does show we picked the right man. Number 2. Many players probably haven't even heard of Bill Boyd, a member of the Poker Hall of Fame who was so brilliant at 5-card stud that the game was no longer permitted in the WSOP. He defeated 10 players to win the $1,000 entry tournament in 1971. The competition for him then started to dwindle after that. The next year, he found himself heads up from the first hand in the $10,000 limit 5-card stud event. He won that easily. The following year, he was the sole participant in the $10,000 limit 5-card stud competition. This makes that event the shortest WSOP event of all time. He bought in for $10,000 and cashed out for the same. Number 3. Jack Strauss used his aggressiveness and ingenuity well during the 1982 WSOP main event. After losing a significant hand on day 2, he appeared to have been knocked out. However, when he got up from the table, he saw a solitary $500 chip tucked away beneath a napkin. Strauss was free to return to his seat and resume playing as he hadn't declared all in or included it in his shove. The next hand was folded to his big blind. He then doubled up his increased stack. Before long, he had the most chips at the table. By the end of day 2, Strauss had 90,000 chips. By the end of day 3, he was the chip leader with 341,500 chips. Before long, Strauss had single-handedly eliminated most of the final table and eventually won the main event beating Dewey Tomko for a record payday of $520,000. Number 4. Stu Unger is considered as the greatest card player that ever lived. He won back-to-back -back main event titles in 1980 and 1981, making him the youngest to win the main event at that time. However, Unger's 1997 main event win was different. No one anticipated it since he had given in to serious substance abuse in the years before. By 1997, Stu Unger had hit rock bottom. He had divorced from his wife, was unable to regularly see his daughter, was battling a severe addiction, and was buried in mountains of debt. Longtime poker friend Billy Baxter came to Unger and offered to pay his buy-in for the 1997 WSOP main event. As Baxter and Unger rushed to the registration, they made it with mere seconds to spare, locking Stu in as the last competitor in the tournament. Unger was exhausted at the start of play. Whenever he felt like giving up, he would look at the picture of his daughter in his wallet. He needed to win this main event not to prove to himself how good he was, but to show his daughter what he was really made of. Stu Unger would win the title, earning the nickname the Comeback Kid and became just the second player to ever win three main event bracelets. Number 5. 
In 1995, Barbara Enright became the first and only woman till date to reach the main event final table. Barbara Enright qualified for the WSOP main event through an online satellite that just costed $220. She asked a previous backer to stake her for 50% but he declined, a decision that would cost him $57,000. Barbara finished fifth that year for $114,000. The following year, she had won the $2,500 Pot Limit Omaha Tournament, becoming the first woman ever to win a bracelet in an open event. Since Barbara's accomplishment, only Annie Duke has flirted with a main event appearance, finishing 10th in the 2000 WSOP main event. Now every year at the WSOP main event, a big to-do is made about the last female standing. Number 6. Winning the World Series of Poker main event changed Chris Moneymaker's life but not as much as it changed the poker industry. It was tremendously uplifting to hear the tale of an amateur poker player who defied all odds to defeat the pros. Thousands of low-stakes players began discussing the idea of participating in the WSOP and other poker tournaments after Moneymaker's win. They believed that if it could happen to Moneymaker, it could happen to anyone. Between 2003 and 2006, the online poker industry also boomed. Online poker qualifiers went from 30 in 2003 to more than 1500 and the prize money went from 2.5 million in 2003 to an insane 12 million dollars in 2006. Number 7. Mark Newhouse achieved what many in the poker community regard as one of the greatest poker feats ever. He reached back-to-back -back final tables of the WSOP main event against fields of more than 6,000 players in 2013 and 2014. Mark Newhouse jokingly tweeted that he would not finish 9th again at the start of the 2014 main event, but that's just what he did. Few performances in the past can compare to Newhouse's incredible main event feat. Although 7 players have reached back-to-back -back final tables in the past, but the field size at that time was nothing compared to the 13,035 players that Mark Newhouse had to navigate. Number 8. In 2007, Phil Hellmuth won his 11th bracelet, surpassing the legendary Doyle Brunson and Johnny Chan to become the all-time WSOP bracelet record holder. He has since extended his record to 16 bracelets, winning his most recent WSOP title in 2021. Brunson and Chan remain tied along with Phil Ivey for second place, still at 10 bracelets each. Number 9. Starting with the 2004 tournament, the WSOP instituted a WSOP Player of the Year award. The WSOP Player of the Year competition seeks to identify and honor the player with the overall best series. However, in 2019, there was a big controversy surrounding the Player of the Year race. Daniel Negrano was pronounced the winner in a hotly contested race between Robert Campbell and defending champion Sean Deeb. Four days after Negrano declared himself as the only three-time champion on Poker Twitter, the WSOP stated that a clerical error had been made and Campbell was the rightful player of the year. Negrano was given credit for a 36th place finish in event number 68, netting him 213 player of the year points. The error was noticed by Alex Elensky, a reporter from Russia who noticed a discrepancy in results between the WSOP and Hendon Mob reports from event number 68 and alerted the WSOP about it on Twitter. Negrano failed to finish in the money at event number 68 and as a result, he did not receive any Player of the Year points for the competition. Negrano came in third overall with 3,861 points after subtracting the 213 points from his Player of the Year total while Campbell's 3,961 total was enough to win the 2019 WSOP Player of the Year award for the Australian. Negrano's critics on social media, including Sean Deeb, invented the absurd conspiracy theory that he cheated and somehow rigged his score total to win. But, like most baseless conspiracy theories, there wasn't any hard evidence to prove their case. Number 10. In 2009, Joe Cata won the main event becoming the youngest player to do so. 
but many people called his victory a fluke. But in 2018, he proved his haters wrong. In one of the greatest accomplishments in poker history, the former WSOP champion returned to the final table and almost won it. He finished fifth out of 7,874 players for $2.15 million. If he would have won it, it would have gone down as the greatest accomplishment in the history of the tournament. Unger has won the main event three times with a combined field of 460 players. The two fields Kata beat was a total of 14,368 players. But just to rub it in the face of his haters, after busting from the main event, Kata registered for the $1,500 closer with 3,120 entries and won that for $612,000. Number 11. Greg Merson's story is a bit like Stu Unger's. Merson had a long-term addiction problem but gave it up just months before the 2012 WSOP. The then 25-year-old pro, who had been clean for seven months, entered the main event that summer and won it after beating 6,597 players. Greg Merson's victory isn't, however, the highlight of this tale. It's the fact that the former world champion has maintained sobriety in contrast to Unger, whose addiction took his life barely after a year he won the main event. Number 12. In 2006, poker was at its peak thanks to the poker boom. That year, the main event drew the largest field size in the tournament's history of 8,773 players. In the largest main event field, one would assume the tournament lead would jump around among numerous players. However, on day 4, entertainment producer and agent Jamie Gold took over the chip lead and literally never looked back. Jamie Gold's dominating performance earned him a record $12 million for his victory. Number 13. Annette Oberstadt was just 18 years old when she won the main event and won million pounds, beating 362 players at the first World Series of Poker Europe. She became the youngest person to ever win a bracelet. She was so young, in fact, that it would take her over two years before she was able to play in Las Vegas. Rewinding a little bit, between September of 2006 and February of 2007, she won $500,000 on PokerStars and $200,000 on Ultimate Bet and $136,000 on Full Tilt Poker. Of course, the kicker was she had to wait until she was 18 to withdraw any of the money from her account. It's not likely we will ever see anyone topple her record. The WSOP in Las Vegas requires a player to be over 21 years old, therefore Annette Oberstad should keep her place in the record books. Number 14. The WSOP hosted a special $500 buy-in tournament in 2019 called the Big 50 to commemorate the 50th annual World Series of Poker. Many poker analysts believe that the Big 50 would rival the record number of participants in the 2015 Colossus when it was first announced. 22,374 entries joined the $565 Colossus No Limit Hold'em event, which is almost unthinkable. The Big 50 shattered that record with a whopping 28,371 entries to create a $13.5 million prize pool. The record-breaking field means that the winner of the tournament will have to accumulate over 1 billion tournament chips. There were 1.42 billion chips in play, the most in play in the history of tournament poker. Of the 28,371 entries, there were 17,970 unique participants and 10,401 re-entries. It took 1,208 dealers to complete the event's four starting flights. Femi Fashikin would go on to win the tournament for $1.14 million. Number 15. There are lucky hands and then there is the Dole Brunson hand, a hand so ridiculously lucky that it forever bears the name of the man who played it. In the 1976 WSOP main event, Brunson was heads up with a player called Jesse Alto. Jesse Alto bet out with Ace Jack, an excellent starting hand, when heads up. Brunson called with 10 deuce suited. The flop came ace jack 10, giving Alto two pair. Brunson went all in with the weaker hand and Alto, of course, called. 
in one of the worst bad beats in main event history, Brunson caught runner runner deuces on the turn and river to make a full house and win the main event. The very next year, Doyle Brunson was again heads up in the main event versus Gary Berland to defend his championship when he once again looked down at 10 deuce. Berlin was dealt 8-5. Yet again, Brunson found himself behind with the flop of 10-8-5 giving him a pair and his opponent two pair. Yet again, the two hit on the turn giving Brunson two pair and this time he was ahead. When Berlin pushed all in, Brunson gladly called. Incredibly, Brunson yet again made a full house on the river when a 10 hit and he was crowned world champion for the second year in a row. This news made it to the big news and the Doyle Brunson hand was born. Number 16. The WSOP which was primarily an event for professional poker players up until 1979 was dominated by the original Texas Road Gamblers. However, Hall Fowler, a modest amateur player, managed to win the WSOP main event in 1979 creating a buzz among poker players across the nation who all began to believe they might win the world championship. Hall Fowler nearly pulled off a Jack Strauss coming back from a mere 2000 chips at the final table, a tall feat considering there were over half a million chips in play. Following Fowler's victory, the WSOP witnessed further growth as an increasing number of amateurs traveled to Las Vegas over the summer to compete in the tournament series. Number 17. When Joe Hashem won the 2005 main event, he turned into one of poker's most upbeat and engaging ambassadors. The Australian poker player displayed outstanding play as he navigated a field of 5,619 competitors to win $7.5 million which was at that time the largest payout for any live poker event in history. Joe Hashem's success in 2005 saw poker enter new markets in Asia, Australia and Europe. Poker was no more only an American pastime, it had gained appeal all over the world thanks in large part to the charismatic Australian's victory in 2005. Number 18. Johnny Chan can claim ownership of one of the most amazing runs in WSOP history. He won the event in 1987, then did it again in 1988 and then finished second in 1989. For those who are fans of two of poker's all-time greats, the 2005 WSOP was a thrilling series. Johnny Chan defeated 425 opponents to win the $2,500 Pot Limit Hold'em event for $303,000 and became the first player to win 10 WSOP bracelets. Amazingly, just a few days later, Doyle Brunson II won his 10th WSOP bracelet in event number 31, a $5,000 No Limit Hold'em tournament attracting 301 entries, many of whom were among the best players in the world including Scotty Wynn, Lane Flack, Men Wynn, Chris Ferguson, John Hennigan, John Juanda and Chip Reese. Speaking about 10 bracelets, in 2014, Phil Ivey became the youngest player to win 10 bracelets at the age of 38, beating Phil Hellmuth who accomplished this feat at the age of 42. Shockingly, Brunson, Chan and Ivey have not won a bracelet since then.